Hey guys, how's it going? I hope everyone is doing really well out there today. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a dashboard to add to your home lab arsenal that will help you keep tabs on all of the Docker ports that you're using. And the service we're talking about today is called DocPeak. So just a couple of quick things before we jump into the rest of this video. Uh, first, uh, as I mentioned, this is a Docker service for other Docker services. If Docker's not your thing, that is perfectly fine. Everyone likes to do things a little bit differently but this is a Docker service. So if that doesn't interest you, there's a lot of other content you can go and learn something amazing today. The second thing is I am not the developer. And while I do want to hear your thoughts and your questions and your comments down in the comment section down below, if you run into an issue, I'm not going to be able to help you with that issue nearly as much as the developer of the application will. So there will be links to uh, the application and the GitHub and that sort of thing in the video description. So please feel free to check that out at your leisure. So what's cool about this is you can keep tabs on a single Docker host, or if you've got multiple LXCs or VMs or Docker servers, you can monitor all of the Docker ports on them as well. And it's super simple to set up. I'll have links to the GitHub repository for DocPeak, as well as my own personal Docker Compose files in the video description. So be sure to check that out. First though, we're going to take a look at my setup, and then we'll talk about getting DocPeak installed. Now my DocPeak setup is installed on my Synology NAS with agents on a few different LXCs across multiple different devices. So what we can see here is our dashboard when we first log in. At the top left, we've got kind of a subdued DocPeak and moving across to the right is a link to the GitHub repository, a refresh button, a button to change between light and dark mode, an option to check for updates and a logout button. All of those are pretty self-explanatory, but I want to touch on the check for updates button here. This allows you to check to see if there are any containers on your servers that you're connected to anyway that need an update or have an update available to them. Now, this will only tell you if there's an update, but won't allow you to perform the update here due to the read-only setting in the Docker Compose that we'll go ahead and take a look at in a little bit. Below that, there is a search feature that allows you to search by name, image, or port. And to the right of that is a toggle that will allow you to filter by the containers that have updates available to them. Now below that, we'll see where it says all localhost, open cloud, Moodist house, and Fossflow tut. Each of these are different servers or LXCs that I'm monitoring from this single dashboard. And we can click on any of those to filter the list below down to the server that we've clicked. And below that is the table that has all of our information in it. Across the top, we've got container, server, ports, image, and status. And clicking any of these will allow you to sort for the respective column, either ascending or descending, depending on your preference. And below that is the information we're actually here for. We can see the container name, the server on which it's installed, the ports, both internal and external to the container that each container is using, the Docker image that is deployed, and the status of the container in question. What's cool is that we can click the port number and be taken to that port on the IP address of the server that it's on. Obviously, if it's a port that doesn't take you to a user accessible page, it won't load, but that is to be expected. Now, there is one thing that I've noticed that I'm not sure that there's actually a fix for, um, but for example, if I click on port 9443 to launch one of my Portainer instances, it won't load because Portainer is looking for an HTTPS URL, and this just loads everything on HTTP. Like I said, I'm not sure what the fix for that might be, but it is something that I noticed. So at the time of recording this video, that's it. That is DocPeak's dashboard. Um, so let's actually now take a look at getting DocPeak installed. Now to do this as efficiently as possible, we're gonna break this down into a few different sections. The first thing that we're gonna do is take a look at a single monitor setup. Then we'll take a look at installing the agent on other Docker servers and adding the required info into our main dashboard Docker Compose and bring that up and kind of bring everything together that way. It's just the best way to understand this. Again, kind of the most efficient way possible. Uh, I've actually recorded this video once and that's why I'm recording it a second time. So uh, let's go ahead and first take a look at the GitHub repository for this. Um, but what I will say here is that the documentation that is there, at least again at the time of recording this video, isn't fully fleshed out. Uh, so be sure to check back on that from time to time to see if anything has changed. But I was able to 
glean enough information from what's on the Docker, or sorry, on the GitHub repository to put together three of my own Docker Compose files to get this up and running in a couple of different ways. Again, links to everything in the video description. Anyway, uh, setting up a single node instance is super easy. So let's take a look at the Docker Compose for this type of setup. We've got the services at the top and under that we've got docpeak. Uh, this is how, basically how every Docker Compose starts, just with the appropriate name up there at the top instead of docpeak, however that might pan out. Uh, below that we've got the container name and the image that we're gonna use. Uh, this setup uses the GitHub container repository to store and transfer the image. So just a little bit of information for you there. And next we've got some environment variables. Be sure to change these for security reasons. So next is ports. And this line tells us that we're going to access this dashboard on port 3420 in your browser, and that it's looking for port 8000 on the inside of the container. If for whatever reason you're already using port 3420 for another container, be sure to change that to another port uh, to one that you're not using, obviously, but don't change the colon or the 8000 that's after it. Then we've got volumes. And while some containers will use a few different volumes for different reasons, docpeak only has one volume and it's connecting to the Docker socket so that it can give us information relevant to our Docker containers. And then lastly, we've got a restart policy of unless stopped. And this is really standard. Uh, it just means that if your server reboots, the container will make every effort to come back up automatically. So at this point, you can deploy this either via command line or your favorite graphical user interface, and then jump over to your server's IP address, put uh, port 3420 on the end, and log in with the credentials you entered in that Docker Compose. And basically that's it. That's how easy it is to set up a single node of DocPeak. So now let's take a look at monitoring more than one node. Now for this, we're actually gonna kind of work backwards a little bit, and we're going to install the remote agent first, and then we'll go back and install the dashboard. Uh, the agent is going to have a lot of the same stuff that we saw in the Docker Compose earlier, as well as some other things. I know that was a dumb thing to say, but I'm tired, so just cut me some slack here. The thing is, there's nothing in here that we're going to change in this Docker Compose. We're gonna leave it exactly as it is, though I encourage you to read through it. But there is one thing that I want you to focus on specifically. There's a line that says read only equals true. And this is super important. This means that the agent in this container shouldn't be able to change anything on the system. It should only be able to read the data and send it to our dashboard and nothing more than that. So go ahead and deploy this either via command line or your favorite GUI, but be sure to make note of the IP address of this server because we're going to need it for the next part. That said, you can also repeat this agent installing process for each of the nodes you want to monitor. Just again, make sure that you make note of the IP address of each node. To deploy the dashboard for multi-node monitoring, it's basically the exact same as how we deployed the single node. In fact, the only thing that is different here is that we're adding some more environment variables. Everything else is the same, so we're not even gonna go over that part again. If you skipped ahead, you'll wanna go back and check out that part of the video. So just a little heads up there. Uh, but what we are gonna do is take a look at the new entries in the environment section. What we're gonna do is add three lines of information per remote server that we want to access. The first line is the URL, the second line is the name of the server, and the third line is the IP address of the server. Remember, I told you to remember that from earlier. So to start things off, the first entry here is the local host. This is the machine, the basically our dashboard machine. The only thing that you need to change here is the IP address on the host name. Uh, you can also change the name on the second line if you want to, but that's completely up to you. For the second, third, fourth, whatever uh, number of server that you want to monitor, we're going to change something on each line. The URL uses a TCP call and then the IP address of the remote server and then port 2375. So on this line, just change the IP address to match the remote server that you want to monitor. The name, which is the next line, is just the name of the remote server so that you know what server you're looking at on the dashboard. And the public host name is the IP address of the remote server or the host name, however you wanna handle that. So change that to the appropriate, in this case, IP address for the server that you're adding. Then basically rinse and repeat uh, to add more entries as I've shown in the Docker Compose 
for each of the remote nodes that you want to monitor. You can put all of this information into a Docker Compose file in your favorite GUI or in, in your favorite terminal emulator or whatever and deploy it. You can then log in using the username and password that you set up in that Docker Compose and you should be good to go. It's really just that simple to get all of this set up. I will have links to the Docker Compose files that I showed in this video, as well as a link to the GitHub repository down in the video description. Uh, also, again, be sure to check the GitHub repository for any updated information, as sometimes, and I've had this happen a lot, big changes in a container's deployment methods and that sort of thing can make my videos out of date very, very quickly. So always be sure to check the GitHub repository and the official documentation to make sure that you've got the most up-to-date information before deploying a container. Um, but I think that kind of covers everything that I wanted to say in this video. I want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me here today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.